welcome to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl, Wealth Transformation. I'd like to start with something funny. A priest approached a small boy on the street and said, Could you tell me where the post office is, please? The boy gave him directions, and the priest said, Thank you. If you come to my sermon tonight, I will tell you how to get to heaven. I don't think so, said the boy. You don't even know how to get to the post office. Wake up, wake up, wake up to being fully alive in your clear awareness of your wealth from the inside out. You are the only one that can wake up to being all that you can be and the best you can be. Wake up to knowing that there is always, and I mean always, more than enough unconditional love and money, but you must believe it in your mind and your heart. Write it down so you can get it in your body. Money is like love. It kills slowly and painfully. The one who withholds it and enlivens the other who turns it on his fellow man, Kehal Gibran. Our guest this evening is Sasha Sabbath. Sasha is internationally recognized as a soul purpose expert, master sound and energy healer, emerging public speaker, and an entrepreneurial intu intuition and purpose soul coach. With 27 years, her mentoring and products are dedicated to catapult spirit-driven, highly intuitive, gifted entrepreneurs into their healing and soul-radiant success. Her, she facilitates her clients and students and audiences in removing blocks to their success, accelerating their intuition access, claiming a deeper embodiment of their soul purpose and by igniting their creative genius for remarkable business and personal soul-derived solutions. She does this by implementing her Divine Triad Toolkit, a customized personal and business mentoring system where she activates broadcasted divine energy called the Transmissions of Grace, Celestial Toning, Sound Healing, and Intuitive en Energy Scan Readings. The results are that her clients, students, and audiences move forward with an unstoppable confidence, soul charisma, courage, and clarity of their life's direction. She supports entrepreneurs with marketing strategies to bring their unique transformational soul signature imprint. Her message, succeed in sync with your soul. Her mission is to heal the heart of humanity through mentoring soul purpose guided business owners, and through the reverent honoring of her animal brethren. Sasha is also an animal healer and intuitive, particularly helping animals and their guardian face that sacred transition when it is time for their beloved animals to walk across the rainbow bridge. This is the second segment with Sasha and continuing our discussion from the first part. Welcome, Sasha. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad that you're here, that finally, after months and months. Is how to navigate and merge into this current of wealth, mm -hmm. into this energetic current of it is there, other people are getting it, I'm going to find that tractor beam of energetic affluence. What do you mean by that? It's an energy. Everything's an energy. Right. If we look at yeah. things, as money's an energy. It's all energy. Yeah. So, what is it that you want me to f tell? What I mean? Yes. <laughs> what? Which? Well, you said a tractor. Tractor beam. Okay. Yeah, tractor beam. What, okay. what do you mean by that? Okay, got it. I mean that if we look at the fact that there are thought forms and there are layers of consciousness, and there are focused energy highways of a particular theme, of a particular message, collective consciousness of something. I'm just saying that let's, let's say that those, con those connected and those concentrated thoughts become like a highway of energy, a tractor beam of energy. It's kind of like a radio or even a TV. Frequency. Yeah, yeah, and you then tune into a dial. You dial into... So, so, so I understand what you're saying. So then you can change that frequency. You say tractor beam. Now, I, I mean, that, that's kind of an intense uh, statement to me. I'm just trying to, I mean, it's easy when you're practiced to change that frequency. 
and it takes discipline to do that. But explain, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to break this down for the viewers. So, yeah, so I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, we'll break yeah. it down. Yeah. Let's just keep, <laughs> let's just keep going. <laughs> so <clears throat> here we have this concentrated thought form of knowing that wealth is there. We know it. Right. So right. let's just assume. It's all around us. Yeah. So let's just assume that it's there somewhere in the ethers. Then with our intention and our attention to find that, whether or not we do is another story. We have to at least start with the intention of knowing that it's there. It's there, absolutely. And yeah. it's no different than driving your car and merging onto a lane of a highway. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good um, analogy. Metaphor, yeah. yeah. Metaphor, De yeah. definitely. So it has to start with a intention, and then we have to use our logical, digital, analytical mind to study, to prepare, to Engage analyze, yeah. Yeah. yeah, to assess how to get onto that highway. And it's just, it's in your, it starts in your mind. It starts with intention. Yeah. Yeah. However, the mind, in terms of all the analysis part that I was just talking about, the left brain, ac the left brain activity, pretty much has to do with you preparing yourself to be able to act once you find that tractor beam know what it looks like when it's coming right by you, and also to be able to maintain yourself in that tractor beam. Hence, people who don't do that are the ones that win these extraordinary amounts of money in the lottery, and, and it blows up. It. Yes, they exactly. lose it, they hurt themselves, things happen. They weren't ready for it. Prepared. Yep. So my saying, what I'm saying is to work on all levels, to work on the intention, the what I call the infrastructure. I teach my clients about establishing the infrastructure of beliefs, decisions, self-image, subconscious programming, to get that inner ground prepared. And then you also have to act. And that's all that analytic. Well, if you don't act, then nothing's, nothing's going to happen. You're going to be where you are forever if you don't act upon that's right. it. That's right. There's a fine line, isn't there, between yes. there's a fine line between doing, 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 and then totally letting go, and then the magic can happen. Yeah, and you know, part of that is getting through the fear. Um, I've had uh, in the last uh, couple months, I've had to work through some fear myself because looking at taking my show nationally, I I had to walk through some fear. And I did it, and but it you know it's like that that oyster shell and the sand, you know it's and like the pearl, you, yeah. you get you know that rub as Dr. Beth Beckwith says, the rub you know and and it polishes, <laughs> it polishes. So you know if we don't grow, if we don't have the irritants and the challenges, we don't grow. Absolutely, that is a given. No matter who you are and where you are, we have to have those challenges. Yeah. I know that, again, I remember my filters are everything is a sole purpose path. Mm -hmm. So when I look at my life where I was ill from early childhood, six months old, mm -hmm. I almost died of asthma and then mm -hmm. other tremendous complications. And, and you've worked through all that. I've worked through most of it. Yeah. It's good. still, it, good. thank you. Yes, it is good, isn't it? Good. I have a vigil with my to health. To be freedom, to, you know, have that <clears throat> To freedom. function, to yeah. function, to act, to be able to act on your will. Healthy. <laughs> to be able to act yeah. on your will. So, that friction of being so sick and bedridden so many times as I was growing up, and even in my adult years, that's why I became self-employed, was I was unemployable. Yeah, right. I couldn't right. hold a job. I couldn't get there on time. My quality yeah. of work was not good. So what did so I do? So you had to go through that challenge to get where you are. Yes. I. Yeah. So what did I do? I said to myself in my early 20s, I have to have my own business. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if we look at this friction model that you're talking about, that was it. Yes, yes. Well, I, I know I have been an entrepreneur for many, many years, and I grew up with an entrepreneurial family. And uh, I, I was a single mom, and I had to take care of my daughter. So I went back into the corporate world. 
And that was a whole nightmare, a total nightmare. Um, and that's what actually gave me the impetus to start writing mm -hmm. and to heal this whole, mm. whole uh, inequity and unethical and you know lack of love and blah 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 in there. Yes. So that's what gave me the impetus to get on this level of where I am. So you know I believe everything we do and go through is is heading towards a path or or to part of you, like you say, the soul, part purpose, everything, if you're open, it's just being open to it, you know, for those people that are like on the edge or that are just learning, it's like being open to it, and then things just start happening, that yes. you know, I mean, everything's been happening that unfolds in the perfect, divine, I say divine order, that you know you're on your right, and you can feel it. Yes. You know it, you feel it. Yes. And the tricky part comes when it feels really bad. And the things that are going on do not feel good. And when you talk see, about that's discipline. That, that's you, that rub. That's yeah. To see if you, 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 I mean, you know, part of that, I think, is to really, to really, it's to anchor how strong you are in your belief on what you're doing. Yes. That's what that's for. Yes. It's to help you identify the absence of it, to help you identify what it really is and what it really isn't. Yes. yes. And to help you put together your strategy, your support group, your trainings, so that no matter what, you do exactly what you said. You just get back into the flow and keep going. Yes. I mean, that's the story of my life. Absolutely. Anybody who knows me, that is the story of my life. People say, I am absolutely unstoppable. Well, I have to, I'll tell you, it was about a month ago, maybe not quite a month ago, I woke up, it was early morning, and I actually sat up because it was so big in ah. front of me, my dream. Ah. And it was like right here in front of me, and it said, you're unstoppable. And it was a big billboard. Ah. It was a billboard, and I thought, wow! Yeah, really? Oh, this how beautiful is, is yes. that? And of course, I write down all my dreams, so it's like, unstoppable. It's like, wow! Well, here we are. Look, we found each other. Wow! Law of attraction. So I'm, you know, I'm, and anyone that I can assist in getting there, that's, I've done my work. Yeah. There's no value that you can put on that. I believe that there's no value. I mean, yeah, you have to put a value on it for money, but you know, really there's no value because it's, that's what healing is all about, mm -hmm. to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm just grat you know, grat I'm grateful. I give gratitude every morning mm. and throughout the day sometimes, depending on what's going on, but gratitude is extremely important. Beautiful. And giving, giving gratitude in, in advance. Mm. When you think big and you have big dreams, mm -hmm. then giving gratitude before it happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you take those steps to get where you're going, mm -hmm. where, you, you know, where you're guided or where, you, where it's happening, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful. Mm. So you're grateful for the vision. You're grateful for the expectation that it's going to happen. And I'm also grateful for what's unfolding because it, the steps are happening and yes I've had to work through some fear to get through that but if you don't walk into and through the fear you'll never do anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I'm just grateful that it's all unfolding and happening mm -hmm. well a I applaud you for being a single mom I think that puts you in a superhuman status well I don't know about superhuman but um, my daughter's 23 and I was three months pregnant when I when I walked away and I, I did it all on my own. Beautiful. And she's very, um, and I'm very proud of her. Yeah. She's still 23, and there's still some of the last of the teenage stuff, <laughs> but she's she's got it. She's got it all, and and it just it's all unfolding. Yeah. So, but thank you, and, and it wasn't easy. Oh my God. It wasn't I, easy. I'm not a human. I'm not a human being, mom. I'm a I'm a fur baby mom, and I have tremendous respect for the role of a parent. Well, I wouldn't be who I am today if I hadn't gone through 
what I've gone through. Understood. You know, I mean, I, I totally had, I, and this is a blessing. I learned how to totally let go of myself and take care of my daughter when she was, you know, from up until about 14. And then the attitude started changing. It's like, this is my child? What alien came into her? <laughs> you know, that's just part of the autonomy process, you know. Interesting, in your sole purpose path, you had a child to help you focus away from yourself. Mm -hmm. On my sole purpose path, I had all this health and emotional traumas that happened that forced me to reclaim my physical body and reclaim my physical body and go through what it takes to deal with these kinds of energies yeah. and keep coming back home. So you and I came at it from different angles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I wouldn't have consciously chosen to do it by myself, but obviously there were, it all worked. It's all working. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing if, you know, that's why I say everything that unfolds in our life is for purpose. Is there's a reason for it, mm -hmm. and all the the financial challenges that I went through. Uh, it, I mean, I, now I can laugh about it. That's good. <laughs> I can laugh about it. Yeah. Because, and first of all, you know, I think that what, what is more important, and I know what's more important, is to have that wealthy feeling inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you can have all the money in the world, and if you don't have that wealthy feeling inside of yourself, because I've known uh, one in particular, billionaire, who, who's empty inside, mm -hmm. but he's got billions. I know, I've heard, you know, I've heard. I, I don't know, no, but I've well, heard. No, well, I, I became very good friends with him for a while, and, until I could see where, you know, and, and understanding where he came from and everything. But, you know, it's like, that's why the most important thing is that unconditional love in yourself, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Stop judging yourself. Stop criticizing yourself. Forgive yourself. We The last show I had was about forgiveness. And, you know, just accepting yourself the way you are and the way you are not. And, again, through my paradigm that dovetails with what you're saying is that sometimes people can't get there. However, when they know their sole purpose matrix which is what I do with my clients, and they understand how those different events were methodically, deliberately designed and planted by their spirit for them to learn certain lessons, mm -hmm. then something opens up where they can fathom it. They're not just paying lip service to self-forgiveness. They're not just paying lip service to accepting oneself. They're not paying lip service to just accepting that everything is folding on track. They go into a deeper ravine of power. I always say that knowing one's sole purpose is both a power and a path. Mm -hmm. It's a power because you can harness it to become so resilient and to become so unstoppable, mm -hmm. become so creative, become so decisive. And then it's also a path because it leads you, just like everything you've been saying. It leads you to certain people, places, and circumstances. And when you understand how it is part of a divine design, you give yourself permission to say no yeah. a lot more easily than, and also yes. So, for instance, I have a lot of clients who come to me and they have struggles with relationships. But when they get to understand their sole purpose and they get to understand the gift that their sole purpose business is bringing into their community, they tap into a, a self-permission yes, and yes. a confident, charismatic power to just simply cut out what is draining them, 
-hmm. what is insulting to their spirit, mm -hmm. and what is... That's a, that's a good thing, insulting to your insulting spirit. Insulting to your yes, spirit. Yes. That's how I, I... like that. I, that's how I train my audiences and my yeah, students and my clients. That's, that's good. You know, when somebody does this to you, or you're having this kind of boundary issue, or your client didn't pay you and they said they would, and no, 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 these things that we create... It is an insult to our soul. Yes. And when people hear it that way, something happens. Yes, and, that, and I love for you to say that because that's very powerful. Your spirit, an insult to your spirit and to your soul. Right. In fact, uh, I just recently started a membership program through my biz, and uh, I teach one training call a month. The first training call is... Waste your time equals insult your soul. Yeah, oh, that, I like that. No, that's good. That's time, true. Time management secrets for the yeah, no, overextended, no. on-purpose entrepreneur. No, Waste true. your time equals insult your soul. So what does that mean? It means it's contracting and it's creating a barrier for your soul to download inspiration, creative ideas, fun things, loving things, compassionate things. That's and, what I meant by it. And everyone on this planet has the ability to tap into this. Exactly. Everyone exactly. has the ability. It's just being open and it's timing and it's, you know. It's it, timing. It's timing. It's timing. And thank God, thank spirit, thank the universe. You know, I mean, I'm so great. That's where the gr gratefulness, the gratitude comes in. Because when you're on this, when you're on your frequency, yeah, it feels so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've had a very rigorous life. I know you've had your challenges too. <clears throat> Most people do. I yeah, mean, everybody I mean, who does. Doesn't? Yes. Yeah. Everybody. And one of the biggest uh, learnings that I have had to uh, acquire as I have been healing this wound of being in a human form, mm -hmm. has been to understand that when it's not feeling good, when it is feeling scary, when it does not make any sense, yeah. when the intention is great but the output is not, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or the rate of return on your effort is not, right. how do you organize that? How do you process that? How do you make sense of that? How do you make that okay? See right there what you're saying? We all go through that. And that's, for me, what gets me through that is that I know I have a divine purpose. Exactly. And it's divine. It's, I, I can't, I mean, I can explain what I mean about divine because it's outside of yourself. It's, it's everybody has a divine frequency within them. Mm. So when you can tap into that because you're actually getting out of yourself, because when you're, when you're in yourself, it's like, it's too limiting. For me it is, I'm speaking from my own experience, that it's so much easier, even though I have had, I've focused on myself by healing myself, but when you know that there's a bigger divine purpose um, that's pulling you, if you're open to it, then you can get through that. Mm -hmm. You can get through that because there's, there's, there's always going to be daylight. There's mm -hmm. always going to be light. You know, when you're in the dark, there's always light. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't always stay in the dark. I mean, yes, it, we all have the dark side, and we all get in the dark, you know, but... Um, it takes... It, it takes a certain um, amount... Should I stop talking? No. <laughs> you look like you're just about ready to get there. No, no, it's okay because it's it's like focusing on, out, and, and it's really, it's almost difficult for me to explain it, to put it in words. I know exactly what I mean, but to say it in words, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge because when you're in alignment with that higher self, put it in those terms, when you're in alignment with your higher self, then it's so much easier because when you have that trust that only good, only prosperity, only wealth, only the best things are possible for you. When you know that, and you acknowledge that, you know that in your heart, then you can get through the challenges. Yeah. But the challenges are there to 
make you ready for the next level. You know, that, that's what it's all about, is all the challenges we go through are to get us to the next level and just keep going. That is the magic of mindset. Uh, I, one of my earliest trainings when I wanted to become self-employed was I became a hypnotherapist. So in hypnotherapy and also a neurolinguistic programmer. So in neurolinguistic programming mm -hmm. and hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. it's all about programming the subconscious right. mind. In I, today's I'm... world, uh, in the coach, mentoring, healer, consultant world, we call it mindset, but it's the same thing. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm I'm sorry, but we're running out. Okay. Of time. I'm done. I mindset, know. mindset, no, mindset. But but please say say something of your wisdom that you have. Please share with us your wisdom because I know. We're coming to the end, and I hate to stop. That's okay. Um, wisdom about what? Mindset? Mindset and wealth. Mindset and wealth. Wisdom. You want wisdom on demand, huh? Um, I think the... I know you can handle I it. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Um, I think that the, the main thing I want to say about wisdom, wisdom and mindset it comes down to, in any given moment, we get to choose. Are we going to choose to suffer in that moment through what we think, through interpretation, through belief, through choices? Or are we going to shift those same increments of belief, decisions, interpretation, choices into something that's going to empower, uplift, honor, and ignite the best that we can be. That has been my challenge in this lifetime because when you have health issues, it's yeah. hard, it's yeah. just hard yeah. to figure out how to okay. do all this. Yeah. So that's what I've learned. Okay. That's, that's what I've wonderful. learned. And thank you so much. Well, thank you. Um, for coming and being our guest and namaste. Namaste. Never give up on your pursuit of your purpose and passion. And even if you don't know what that is, work with integrity and have a positive attitude wherever you work, and please, first and foremost, with your family and friends. Be grateful for what you have, who you are, and where you have come from. And be grateful for your freedom and eat healthy. Good nutrition feeds the mind and your body temple. Don't forget to keep moving your body by working out. Keep your spirituality with meditation and prayer with unconditional love, and love yourself unconditionally. And share your abundance and wealth with others. And thanks for watching. Please support Marin TV that brings these messages. Remember, when fear knocks, let faith answer the door. To all you viewers out there from Marin County, can you please contact me to let, me, let us know who you are and what city you live in as a viewer. This is really important for the survival of Marin TV and our shows. I will give you my email and phone number at the bottom of the screen and in the credits at the end of the show to reach me to let us know. Thank you so much in advance for your effort and cooperation. Bye for now. Until next time.